Hey guys, how's it going? Burstway here bringing you another video. Today we're going to be looking at Akali vs Yasuo played in Korean Challenger on 11.21. Well, actually it says 11.21, but it was four days ago and the patch was like three days ago. So I don't know if it actually was 11.21 or 11.20. Um, but in any case, let's have a look quickly at the runes. we got Conqueror. I'm not sure if Conqueror, again, we're not sure which patch this is on, right? But let's assume it is on 11.21. Um, Conqueror did get nerfed a little bit basically just does less damage. Um, the presence of mind is going to be really good for Akali players. They don't run out of energy. Tenacity, we have Yumi, Lilia, uh, I guess Gragas. Yeah, I think Tenacity is okay. Last stand, pretty simple on Akali, right? You want um, that final Q, or sorry, that final R to do as much damage as possible. Second wind and Tenacity. Second wind means you can survive the poke and the trades from Yasuo and tenacity again for the tenacity i don't know if this is necessary maybe healing could have been like revitalized could have been taken um you can't really take anything in this first tree maybe overgrowth but unflinching is okay it's not bad double c double uh, tenacity is not bad and magic resists that's probably not great because you're into yasuo so yeah, I mean, maybe she flushes into Gragas, who knows, but probably armor is just better into Yasuo. Cool. And obviously, Ignite TP pretty common. The general rule is you only want to take Flash if you have a hard time getting onto the enemy champs. And yeah, this time, of course you do. It's a little disengaged with Lilia Gragas, Yasuo Yumi, even MF. So um, you could say taking Flash is fine, but on Akali specifically, because she has her E, because she has her W, because she has her ult, don't need the flash, but this would definitely, if you were going to take flash this game, uh, in any game as a Kali, this would be a pretty good game for flash. Cool, cool, cool. So I think she starts Doran's Blade into Yasuo? Doran's Shield. Okay. Uh, I guess Doran's Shield makes sense. I mean, a Kali's not super strong early game, so being able to heal up with the second wind is going to be super, super nice. Yasuo has taken Ignite and Flash, and he's Yasuo, which means that he's probably going to be strongest levels 1 to 4 into Akali, and then also um, his like wave manipulation is going to be a lot easier, he's faster push, and in the early skirmishes he's going to be a lot more useful. Akali already down to half health, but she's got the second wind Doran Shield to heal back up, plus the pot. Yasuo is missing, so she has to be a bit careful, make sure he's not roaming to the Talon, which he is, but it's okay. Because it's Talon, he just jumps away. So not, not terrible. Um, Wave's in a pretty nice spot for Akali here. As long as she can dodge those Q2s from Yasuo. Ah, uh, Q3s, I should say. Alright, it does get knocked up, but again, a lot of sustain in this setup. Another option, I guess, instead of Conqueror would be take the fleet footwork, give you even more sustain, but I guess she's decided that in Tiaswo, if she takes the shield and second wind, that should be enough regen, which I think I agree with. If you're into like a, an Orianna or something like this, then maybe the fleet foot is better. Yasuo rooms bottom. So Kali's gonna push the wave here. Oh, never mind. she's actually gonna TP. Gets a kill. Unfortunately, her wave is in a pretty bad spot. So whenever you go for a TP play, you really want the wave pushing towards you because if it's slow pushing away, you're going to miss a bunch of CS and your opponent's not. So you see Yasuo is probably going to get all those CS. So the wave, not in an ideal spot for Kali for that TP, but she does pick up a kill. So it's not the end of the world. Some, some people would make the argument that lane state and holding the TP is going to be better there than TPing and getting the kill. I'm not sure. Um, I think they're both like pretty good. Yasuo rooms top, Akali follows. Maybe another option is instead of the second tenacity, she takes like demolish and when Yasuo keeps roaming like this, you try and get a plate or something. Um, but probably the tenacity unflinching, I believe it's called, is going to scale better for her than the you know, chance of getting 
160 gold, maybe 320. So in this situation, all she needs to do is just chill. She has completed her Iron Spike Whip, so it looks like she's going Gore Drinker. Gore Drinker is another item that was definitely nerfed on the patch, another system I should say, uh, similar to Conqueror. Basically it just uh, gives you less AD, and um, I mean they removed the health regen, but like we said, Akali already has quite a lot of that in her kit and in her setup, so that doesn't really matter, but yeah, the basically it's, it's uh, just scales worse with AD. So it'll be better on champions with high base ADs that, you know, um, don't necessarily build a lot of AD. Because if you're building AD, there are just better mythics now, like Eclipse, for example. She solo kills the Aswa, which is super nice for her. Gonna pick up the Phage. Yeah, definitely going Gore Drinker. I guess could be going Strybreaker. But, yeah, could be going Strybreaker, I suppose, against Lilia, but... I would assume if she's not going like an AP item that she's going Gore Drinker because AD Akali is not good but Gore Drinker, at least last patch, was very very good on pretty much every champion, every melee champion. So She definitely has item parity with Yasuo and she has a slight XP lead. So she can just relax and basically Akali's going to spike around two items, whereas Yasuo is going to spike basically after the two items, Yasuo will just get stronger and stronger. But until then, Akali is scaling in the early game. So basically Yasuo wins early, then he has a trough in the middle, and then he's good late. Whereas Akali kind of just spikes in the middle. So this is kind of the dream early game for Akali, right? She's keeping up in CS, she's completed her mythic at 11 minutes, she's got a couple kills, had some impact on the map with TP, hasn't died. You know, it's pretty, pretty good. Enemy Lily is quite fed, same with enemy top lane and bot lane. So this is actually quite interesting to see, right? Because this is Challenger, yep, Challenger Korea, and all her, like, teammates, except maybe her jungle, who's got a big CS lead, because he's just been, you know, out the Talia, essentially, but... That being said, it's not like Talia's been playing badly because she has been getting some kills. So... Oh, that's interesting. So Talon comes in for the kill, and Akali doesn't even help because she's just used all her abilities. She just bases, and she looks for the tempo TP on bot lane to stop the Herald. This could be good. Okay, goes on to the MF. Gets kited. That's unfortunate. Um... Basically, the exhaust from Yumi, combined with the Liliol and the fact it was a 3v1, um, meant that she uses TP, doesn't get anything. So, it was a nice idea to go for that play, but maybe could have played it a bit slower, waited for her teammates, or maybe just shouldn't have gone for it at all, because her teammates were not in a position to follow up. And then she's rewarded with a free kill onto the Yasuo. So, none of that matters, because her Alistair just gets her a free kill, I guess. All right, MF is really overextended here. Actually works out, it was a bait with the Yumi, but now it's gonna be a 1v2. Kali's pretty strong. Wow, well played there by the MF Yumi there. Because they were overextended, that's just true. But, yeah, I guess the Fiora, I believe it was, we just went in too early. Or was it Fiora or was it Aphelios? Maybe it was Talon. There was someone top, and they basically just went in too early. If they just waited for Akali, they would have won that 2v2, 2v3. But, uh, yeah. So, well played, I guess, to the MF. They're knowing her limits with the Yumi. But uh, also kind of a mistake from Akali and her teammates. Because also, after Akali's teammate died, Akali should have just given up the play as well. Shoved into top, so top's missing CS. And here we go. Akali, one item and boots. There we go, yep. That's nice. Oh, bit of a mistake there from Akali. She reactivated her E too early um, because Yasuo had his third Q. She should have waited for it to run out or him to use it. That being said, her E was probably running out, so it's kind of a tough situation to be in, but Akali just misplayed the fight, essentially. 
which is completely understandable because Akali is a very, very difficult champ to play. And, you know, your entire team essentially is just running it down. Talon actually has gone Strybreaker, which indicates to me that this might actually be uh, 1121. Because I feel like Talon would always go Gore Drinker otherwise, because Gore Drinker is just so strong. But maybe, you know, maybe this is last patch and he, this guy's just ahead of the curve. Morello completed here. A lot of healing on the enemy team. Gragas, Yumi, even MF, to be honest. So Morello makes a lot of sense. MF healing, of course, coming from that Eclipse with the lifesteal that she has. And, you know, summon a heal, of course. We see Talon's also going for healing reduction. But again, enemy Yumi. So it makes a lot of sense. Quite cheap. I don't know about completing the Morella, but it's probably fine. It makes you stronger in the early game. I'm thinking maybe Needlessly Large plus Oblivion Orb is going to be better. But I guess Morello, it, it gives you the, the strength now, right? Like in the short term. So it's not terrible, but yeah, I probably would have gone Oblivion and Needless to accelerate the Rabadons. Cool, cool, cool. Kali's top here. Oh, bit of a fight. Nice. Just picks up a kill on the Gragas. Okay. Cool. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention at the start of the video, um, I am actually currently opening coaching, so accepting new students and new teams. So if you guys are interested in that, there is... A link in the description or all the information is in the description i should say um yeah i oh, just forgot to say that at the start of the video whoops <laughs> i am a little bit tired today to be honest but still want to make sure that i am uploading these videos every day just to you know keep the discipline keep the consistency anyway uh in this game five versus four in the mid lane that good engage from the alistair akali is going to dive deep Take out the Yasuo. Wow, I didn't even notice she landed her E. Really nice. So yeah, Kali's playing these fights really, really well. There's not a lot of macro stuff going on. She's essentially just shoving out waves and then looking for some sort of a, an objective or a fight. So in this situation, she shoves mid, gets mid tower, right? Now she's going to shove mid again and look for either a reset or... Yep, she's looking for a reset, but she could have gone for like top scuttle, top, uh, top wave things like this, you know, there's, there's always something else to do on the map. And that's the constant question, really, especially in low elo, because in low elo, there's a lot more stuff to do on the map because people don't, for example, enemy jungle camps are pretty much always up in low elo, right? In high elo, they're pretty much always down. So you don't really have to consider, should I invade jungle camps? Because they're pretty much always down. Um, but in low elo, they're pretty much always up, right? So a lot of the time, if you're actually thinking consciously about the game, this is another reason why I think people just choose not to think about macro is because it's can be quite complicated when you think about it properly. There is no simple, like just do this and you'll win every game. It's like very, very complicated, but it's also very, very simple. Right. And the basic thing you want to consider is just what can I do right now with my current items and levels and health and mana, right? Because that's all you get when you recall, right? Is items, health, and uh, mana, right? Or in this case, energy. That's all you get. So what is that? And also technically you get uh, cooldowns, like longer cooldowns, because when you recall and then you run back onto the map, let's say your ult has 20 seconds left, then you might have your ultimate up. So you basically just consider like, am I strong enough right now to get any objectives, right? And so let's say, oh, right now I'm strong enough to take mid tower and, you know, not die or to take mid tower. And then if the enemy team come and contest me, then I can fight it. But then you have to think, okay, well, if I take this mid tower and then what objective after that? So let's say the next objective is like Baron, right? Well, let's say after you take the mid tower, as the game finishes, let's say after you take the mid tower, um, you're now too weak to contest the Baron. So you have to recall and then you just lose Baron. Do you see what I'm saying? So 
it is quite complicated and a lot of the situations are actually unique they're not repeatable so it's hard to find the patterns but they are there and yeah i mean we saw in this game challenger akali i feel like there was no amazing macro play right it was kind of shove waves look for a fight if you have a lot of gold you base if you're low hp you base um yeah not nothing super complicated but anyway guys thanks for watching like i said if you're interested in coaching all the information should be in the description and have a nice day goodbye